Hey y'all, Coach and Fire here, guys. Stay with me. Hey. And in today's class, we're going to be talking about how certain people watching this video will be responsible for saving their whole region of the world. Okay. We're looking here in teaching 32 of the book of True Life. And if you guys have been following this channel, you know we've been doing a lot of work out of this book. Mm -hmm. um, Stacy has been participating in some of these readings of these teachings. Right. And we've also been trying to give away some copies of this multi-volume book mm -hmm. that we know as the Book of True Life, by which we get the Third Testament. Right. So it is an extremely important book, very important for the time we live in now because of the information that it includes and one of the things that it talks about is how we will save whole regions of the places where we live okay you hear about people getting ready for the pole shift and they're wondering where they should move should they move to the mountains should mm -hmm. they move to the valley should they move to africa or should they move to the united states and you would say to stay where you're at? Well, according to this, what we're going to learn here, yeah, it's not necessary to move because wherever you're at, if you're properly prepared, will be saved based on you and what you're doing. The people around you and, as you said, in your entire region um, will be saved because of you and the things that you know. Yeah. Like it says down here, through one of you, whole regions will be saved. Mm -hmm. But let's go ahead and let's read through this first, taking it pretty slow. And let's talk about what we read here in verse 30. Okay. In this time, I announce to you the trials which will come to be. Three quarters of the earth shall disappear. Pain will touch all men and the world will suffer great hardships. But if you prepare yourselves, through one of you, a whole region will be saved. Well, so here's what we're talking about. It's first talking about the global earthquake mm -hmm. that we hear about in Revelation and all over the Bible. This severe earthquake that's supposed to shake down every building on the planet. That's the three quarters of the earth shall disappear. Yes, that's actually how the government systems will fall is because they just won't be able to recover. They won't have the money or the resources to rebuild. Like if it's just a earthquake in a small region somewhere, they, well, this one is going to be different. It's going to be a global earthquake. As, as we're reading here, whole continents will go underwater. So it would be easy if just one country could possibly, um, you know, have uh, hardship or even if some of the land disappears, other countries will go in and support them. But when you have three quarters of the earth um, disappear, that's a big thing. Yeah, that's what's going to be a game changer because we're not going to be watching it on television, contemplating the idea of going over there and helping somebody or sending resources. We too, wherever we're at on this planet will be suffering this great hardships we're all going to go through it he so says, everybody's going to be affected everybody's going to be affected and nobody's going to be able to come to our rescue okay it says here pain will touch all men the world will suffer but let's see what it says next the science attained by men will not suffice to cure the strange illnesses which will appear so now think about this what this is saying in the first part is that through one believer, there's one believer somewhere. You can imagine in, in, in each of the counties around the world, there's probably at least one person who is truly working to do what the scripture says. Mm -hmm. And they will be properly prepared to save that particular region, mm -hmm. whether it's the county, the state or whatever. But you can imagine that no one would know that it's because of this one person that they have been saved. I mean, just like now, this be the case when it comes to rain. There's a lot of areas that should be in a drought right now. But because you have one of our father's people in that particular region, the whole region is getting rain right now. And so there's people who don't necessarily believe in the scripture whose crops are growing and animals are getting water and they don't know it's because of a certain disciple 
who happens to live in their community or close by. Right. Well, when this global earthquake happens and these regions have survived, well, now you have to deal with these illnesses. Mm Mm-hmm. As these people are celebrating the idea of having survived the greatest earthquake that any human has ever seen, will now have to deal with stuff like noisome boils, like we read about in the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. But anyway, let's go on. Then you will understand that you must elevate yourselves beyond that which is earthly to cure and remedy illnesses. So these people who have now saved these regions are now going to have to go out and cure these ailments. Mm -hmm. So whereas if it were just an earthquake, the people who would survive would just go on with life, never having to contemplate the idea of reading their scripture and doing what it says. But because of these strange ailments, they're now going to have to depend on these same disciples who are responsible for saving the region in the first place. So will these disciples know that they are the ones who have been set apart to save these these people? Absolutely. You're getting a little bit ahead of us. Okay. But what he says is that he's going to actually send this message out spiritually Okay. to activate these individuals to send them out about the world spreading this message of truth that will be necessary to deal with the aftermath of all of this catastrophic events and stuff okay israel shall liberate humanity from great catastrophes so this is key it says here israel is going to be responsible for liberating humanity from these catastrophes and that's talking about spiritual israel absolutely spiritual israel um these are the people who are obeying the scripture and doing what it says well they will be the ones knowledgeable of spirit to spirit communication as well as how to pray in order to liberate humanity from these catastrophes right. i mean that's why they're known as the first fruits they're being prepared for these events today mm-hmm. and yes we're not talking about bloodline israel like you said this is spiritual israel all right let's just go on but how greatly you must prepare yourselves in order to fulfill your destinies So this is why we do these classes, Mm -hmm. talking about the law, talking about how to pray, talking about spirit to spirit communication and charity and all of these other things that our Messiah taught us. This is our preparation. Right. And what we're reading here, that this preparation is necessary if we want to complete these missions. Right. So that's why we study the scripture to show ourselves approved so that when it is time to go out and teach the world, we will know this truth. We Mm -hmm. will understand what the Bible actually says and won't be out there trying to make up stuff. Right. All right. The apostles of this time will go from region to region, taking the good news And their gifts shall be like an inexhaustible fountain, offering an abundance of blessing to men. So here's what we were talking about earlier, how these apostles will be sent out, Mm -hmm. right? They are now learning the so-called Song of Moses. Well, after these events happen, after these catastrophes start, then they will have the mission to go out and spread that message of truth. Okay, so when it talks about taking the good news, that is the message of truth. Yeah, absolutely. The message of our Messiah Mm -hmm. who taught us through Passover, we can get the remission of our sins. And then we learn later on in books like Barnabas that that remission is necessary for the construction of the temple on our hearts, Mm -hmm. which is the good news. Right. Our father wants to dwell in our tabernacle and all we really have to do is get prepared to do so. I would think that after all of the catastrophes that people would be more so easily convinced of the good news than they are now. So Absolutely. The world must be humbled first. Right. That's what the whole earthquake will do for us is it will humble the world and prepare us to hear from our father. It's too bad that all that's necessary through pain. We can't do it on our own. We have to have bad stuff in order for us to turn toward him. So So, um, jumping off of that statement, 
Is there still today a need to continue to tell the people about the good news or do we um, humbly wait um, until after the catastrophe? Well, you would always talk to people because you never know who is who, right? You just can't be offended when they reject you and don't want to hear it because this earthquake, this humility will change people Mm -hmm. and you don't know who's going to turn toward the scripture and who's going to turn away from it at this point. So we just have to wait and see. With each miracle that I grant them, new apostles will develop faith and arise and their mission shall be great. So this is kind of what you were talking about, how... Mm -hmm. When people start to see these miracles, they too will want to participate in this greater work. Right. And so you can imagine this thing will spread like wildfire Mm. after the global earthquake. I mean, if you tried to do so now, you would be distracted by televisions and football and all kinds of things that we have in the world to keep us occupied in the meantime. Yeah. Just the cares and concerns of the things that are going on are enough to um, distract us from reading so i know it would distract us from just taking the time to um learn about you know the things of the father Mm -hmm. but woe unto them if they become vain for they will lose their gifts so this is important right because these people are going to get all of these supernatural powers Mm -hmm. i mean they have them now they just aren't really called into service to use like they will be when these catastrophes start. But we have to notice here that it says, if you become vain, you will lose your gifts. Mm -hmm. And I thought about this a little bit. And to me, what this is saying is if you start to believe that you are somehow responsible for these gifts, Mm -hmm. you know, the healings, the miracles, if you somehow start to believe that it's you then you're going to take the focus off of the Elohim that is actually doing this stuff. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to abandon you. Right. He who will attempt to save his own life will lose it. Right. So he who is trying to elevate himself by way of these miracles will be stripped of those same gifts. Right. I was doing my reading today and I learned how it talked about how we will never understand all of the... And it used sort of like the word hardships and all of the things that the Elohim go through just so that we can make it to the next step. Right. right? It, so. it talks about how we are kind of like children, unaware of what's all going on, how much they're doing to help us. It's called us toddlers. Yeah, yeah. So we're <laughs> like toddlers. All right. So let's read verse 32 and then we're going to go to teaching 47. Respect the gifts granted to your brothers. Cultivate the tree which I have entrusted to you, for you are all laborers in one single field. My charity follows you everywhere. I know your deeds and your thoughts. Watch and pray, because humanity needs your prayers for its spiritual evolution. See, these people have a serious job to do. All right, so now we're going to go down to teaching 42, which is the second time we see this phrase, whole region. Listen to my advice as father and do not run away from me. In other words, all of the scripture, the, he doesn't force the scripture on us and tell us that we have to do such. He presents the law to us and gives us the opportunity to follow that law. Free will. Free will. And so that's what he's saying here. Don't turn away from it. You know, turn toward him. He wants us to come to him freely. I have told you that a whole region can be saved by just one virtuous individual. So you have one individual saving a region like we read back in the other teaching. But here he's added the word virtuous. Yeah, that's a big deal. Yeah, he's saying that these individuals have to be virtuous. Up there it said prepared. Mm -hmm. And maybe there's a relationship between the two words. I'm sure there is. But virtue would definitely be necessary if we want to be part of these miracles and this work in order Mm -hmm. to save humanity. Mm Mm-hmm. If you are unable to become truly virtuous, then at least regenerate yourselves and work hard. Now, we learn about the virtues in the Shepherd of Hermas. Right. But a lot of people have not heard of the Shepherd of Hermas and are not familiar with that extremely important book. Mm -hmm. I mean, at one time it was part of the New Testament. 
there were two additional books in the New Testament in the Sinaiticus Canaan, which is the earliest Canaan, the oldest known Canaan known to man. There were actually two additional books in the New Testament that have since been removed. I know one is the Shepherd of Hermas and the other is the Epistle of Barnabas, right. which we referenced a little earlier when we were talking about how baptism and Passover gives us the remission of our sins and allows that temple to be built on our hearts. Well, we only learn about that in the Epistle of Barnabas, just like we only learn about these virtues in the Shepherd of Hermas. And I don't think that it's a coincidence that those two books were the only two books removed from the New Testament because those understandings are absolutely necessary for those who want to survive and live in the kingdom of heaven. Well, you would say that the Shepherd of Hermas is probably one of the most important books, along with the great book of true life that we could have today because it not only teaches us about the virtues, but it teaches us how to get to the kingdom. Absolutely. And you mm -hmm. see here that these virtues will be responsible for the saving of these whole regions. People who understand the Shepherd of Hermas will be responsible for saving whole regions simply because they are virtuous individuals. Right. So I would advise you guys to check out the Shepherd of Hermas. It's an extremely important book. But notice right here where it says, but if you are unable to become virtuous, right. like for instance, if you haven't heard of the Shepherd of Hermas or you don't know about it, mm -hmm. he says, then at least regenerate yourself, which is baptism. Okay. I was so, going to ask, what did that mean? Yeah. So you look here, you have these two epistles, the Shepherd of Hermas and the Epistle of Barnabas, both being referenced here as it's talking about saving these whole regions. Mm -hmm. So this is what I was talking about earlier. It's like someone didn't want these regions to be saved because they removed the virtue out of the scripture mm -hmm. and they remove the scripture that tells us what baptism and Passover do for us. Right. You have people that think they're just symbolic acts, not realizing that this is actually necessary for our father's work in the salvation of all of humanity. Right. But anyway, let's go on. So before we go on, what about the work hard part? Well, is that talking about preparing ourselves? It could be talking about preparing yourselves. I'm, I'm not really sure here. This is a little unfamiliar because it's talking about the person who doesn't know virtues and the person who doesn't know the power of baptism. So what work would they be doing other than reading the scripture or maybe charitable deeds? Mm -hmm. And this could be what this is talking about because there is another scripture in this great book of true life that tells us that if we have been raised in fanaticism or materialism, in other words, if we have been brought up under heresies and false doctrines and misunderstandings and lies, what we have to do in order to make up for that lost time is to do charitable deeds for our brother. That's a way of making up. And so that's what this could be talking about when it says work hard is that we have to do charity right. to make up for the lack of these virtues and the lack of the law, which creates the sin that we have to be regenerated from. Right. But you guys can tell us what you think in the comment section. We're going to go on. Thus, you can regain my divine grace and become one of my messengers on earth. See, now this right here makes me again believe that this is talking about charity mm -hmm. because of how necessary charity is. Mm -hmm. If you remember, our Messiah told us to love our father with all our hearts and to love our brother as ourselves. Right. Well, to love our father with all of our hearts is this divine grace that we lost when we got away from the law. Mm -hmm. Anytime we step away from the law, we separate ourselves from this divine grace. Right. And so one of the things that charity does is it sort of reconnects you back to that grace. It makes up for those transgressions. Mm -hmm. Like the scripture says, charity covers a multitude of sin. Right. So even though we've broken the Sabbath day and we've accidentally worshiped other gods on pagan holidays mm -hmm. and that kind of thing, we can now do charity in order to make up that lost ground. Right. That's extremely important. 
This is why you hear all throughout the scripture to love our brother. Right. That charity is what's going to save us. But let's go on. Do not be indifferent to pain. Because we are not experiencing it. So it's easy to be like, I don't care. That's not happening over here. Right. I remember when the Russian invasion started and people were talking about Ukraine as if there was some isolated world or, and the war couldn't possibly spread over here. I got a little bit frustrated. And for one of the commenters, I told him it was like living in, in, in an apartment building, cheering that your neighbor's apartment was on fire. Mm-hmm not realizing that we live in the same building Mm -hmm. and it's just a matter of time for that fire to reach us well what it's saying here is don't be indifferent to the pain right because it could and will come upon us if we do don't be quick to say what does it have to do with me right Mm -hmm. absolutely all right so let's go on pray for your brethren because your prayers will help your brothers to dry their tears and to attain peace and blessings. So this is what we do instead. Right. Instead of being indifferent, we have to even make an attempt to feel their pain through mm-hmm. our prayers. You I know? think you sort of got a little pushback when you call for prayer for the people of Ukraine. Yeah, absolutely. Because people have a lot of different feelings right. about, you know, that region of the world. Mm-hmm. You have to remember that is the part of the world where the Holocaust went down right. and all of that kind of stuff. So a lot of people had a lot to say. Before humanity weakens under the weight of its cross, I will be its helper and will take its heavy load in order for it to continue progressing. And so this is why our prayers are necessary. Right. This is what our prayer is doing is it's focusing its attention that this Elohim will then use to help people. Right. Which is the mission of these disciples, also known as the 144,000. This is what they will be doing. It's up to them to save humanity. Right. So what these one individual or these individuals in these different regions will be doing for others is to, um, when they start to become weak and they start to try to bear their heavy, heavy load, they will be there to help them. Yeah, well, Mm -hmm. yeah, like, absolutely. When all of these catastrophes come up on the world and humanity is ready to give up, ready to just lay down and die, Mm -hmm. you have these army, our father's army dispatched around the world to come with this good news that, hey, our father has a plan for us. And all we really have to do is what the scripture says and we will be saved. Right. Just imagine it, how... um that one person come to somebody in despair and tell them, hey, you know, do this feast and, mm-hmm. you know, your illnesses will be healed or, you know, know of this plant and help them and their illnesses will be healed. Uh, that sort of have you have a way of making you open your mind to some of the things that you've closed your mind to yeah. and be able to, I guess, receive the word where otherwise you would have had said, I don't want to hear it. Yeah. And, you know, one of the main things that they'll teach is how to pray. Right. You know, I know people, you know, they kind of choke on it when I say this, but the world doesn't know how to pray. We're praying wrong. Even in our churches, we're told to pray out loud. We're told to use words like God and and other words. And we're not taught the Lord's prayer as he taught us. So we don't use it. So when these disciples show up, one of the things that they'll teach is spirit, the spirit communication. Mm -hmm. And like we learn in the third Testament, once a person starts to use spirit, the spirit communication, then they start to hear back from our father and they're always pleasantly surprised. So it'll be those and many other things that they'll teach all according to our father's direction so all we really just need to do is be prepared and if i can i want to point you back to the epistle of barnabas and the shepherd of hermas i guess i'll give two links to those books if somebody wanted to listen to the audio books right and don't forget about the book of true life if if you want to participate in some of the works that we're doing there, I'll give you guys a link to those readings. Check them out. And if you want to participate, just let me know. And with that, we will see you in the next class. And Shalawama.